When I was 15 growing up in Montana, I remember hearing that the best way to get into a good college was by studying a second language. Now, I didn't even know anybody who could speak a foreign language other than the high school teachers. I was seeing a lot of Spanish text on our cereal boxes, though, so I took the obvious route. I signed up for Spanish. Fast forward 10 years, though, let me tell you about irony. I'd fallen in love and married my husband, a trilingual man from Europe, and we were living in Berlin, Germany. He had no problems hopping between languages and communicating, while I, all I knew how to say were guten tag, ja, and of course, a slew of Spanish phrases. As I walked through the streets of Berlin, getting our bread, or trying to figure out where to find more contact lens solution, I was overwhelmed by the most incredible feeling you see, I was surrounded by more people than I ever had been in my entire life. Yet I started to feel really alone. I craved connection, a nod from a stranger, a friend to walk with, or a chat with the cashier about fresh cherries. I needed to feel a sense of connection, worthiness, like I belonged there. It turns out I'm not the only one who suffered from this sense of social isolation. Disconnection is everywhere and it's destroying us. According to research led by Julianne holt Lundberg for Brigham Young University, the influence of our social relationships weighs just as heavily on our lives, on our health and our morality, as well-established risk factors like smoking, drinking, or inactivity. And a recent study funded by ARP found that over one in three adults identifies himself as lonely and our seniors who have greater social relationships have a 50% increased chance of, of survival than those who frequently experience alienation or unworthiness. Happiness does not come from the number of people you're friends with on Facebook or how many people attended your wedding. No, happiness has to begin somewhere else. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. It all begins with story. Story empowers us, it enriches our lives. It helps us better learn about ourselves, so then in turn, we can better understand one another. Strangers become friends, and enemies become allies. So as I was walking through the streets of Berlin, I realized that the best way for me to be able to connect with the people around me was naturally learning the local language. There were about 20 different adults in my class that came from places like Poland, Brazil, India, Russia, none of them dressed like me, or sounded like me. I looked at the girl sitting next to me. She was writing in a language, an alphabet that I couldn't even recognize. How can we possibly begin to connect, I wondered. How does anyone find a form of community in a place where people speak differently or come from various places? How do we find that sense of unity when we move to a new town, switch schools, or get a new job? The answer, I discovered, is really quite simple. We just need to be heard. We have this deep biological need to share our stories and ourselves. So tell me about me. Tell me about you. Tell me about where you come from, what you love to do. Tell me what inspires you. I was interested to discover how many of the women in my class felt about themselves. They dreaded working in small groups or standing up in front of everyone to speak some German. They'd cast their eyes down and they'd quickly cover their mouths whenever they laughed or smiled. Now, at first I thought it was just a matter of confidence, like maybe they didn't grow up with that same you can do it gusto that we have here in America. And many of them didn't, of course. But it goes deeper than that. What underpins this difference between expressing who they truly were and what they revealed to our class was a feeling of insignificance. Many people don't think there's any value in their lives or in their stories. It's a problem that we see stretching across cultures and across generations. You'll see it here in America all the time. My own grandmother is 95 years old. She'd say to me, Katie, my story doesn't matter. Nobody wants to hear that. Grandma, I would say, tell me your stories. I will listen. And do you know what? She would start talking. 
This is how we learn about each other. It's how we inspire one another. So I began my mission to help people celebrate their stories and in turn, honor themselves. I'm a story catcher. It's a lot like being a storyteller, only now I'm finally listening to my mother because I'm zipping my lips and I'm listening and I'm watching. A lot of my stories get written in journals. I like that meditative process of sitting down and writing to a dear friend. She listens uninterrupting and unjudging to my steady stream of words. You might say I have a journaling addiction. Not a journal addiction, mind you. Those blank books, the ones that are bound with specific pages where you have to begin and have to end, they scare the pants off of me. And then of course there's that first page. It's blank and it's white. It's staring at you and it's just waiting for you to mess up. Eager for you to accidentally date your first entry, 2003, instead of 2013. So I started journaling on other things instead. The back pages of my, journal, of my German notebook, for example, scrap paper, raffle tickets, whatever I had. And as I did, I began to discover something. To let ourselves be truly seen by others, we have to be able to deeply see ourselves first. It all begins with self-love. Franz Kafka, author of The Metamorphosis, wrote in his journal, Writing is the ax that breaks the frozen sea within. Journals honor this basic, intrinsic need to share our stories. They unlock the extraordinary in our lives. When really we think, no, it's just ordinary. And journals also take the time to help us chisel away those layers that we have built around ourselves. The ones that are saying, you are not worthy. So I, was sitting in my German, so I was sitting at my desk one day, supposed to be studying my German, when I was, started creating this list of prompts. You see, I was so fascinated by the extraordinary stories that my classmates were telling. Now, they all thought these stories were quite ordinary and quite dull. And I started wondering how many stories there are there in my life that I'm not getting down on paper, that I'm not even realizing are extraordinary. And so I started writing. And I looked at this list of prompts, I thought, wait a second, maybe these prompts are the first key in helping more people feel a sense of significance and worthiness and connection to the people around them. So a couple of months later, I opened my online shop, I called it Gedanke, which comes from a German word that means thought or idea. I started selling my first handmade writing prompt journals in between all my different German classes, of course. And when I made these journals, I wanted to be able to create something that just really got rid of the traditional form of journaling, where you feel this sense of, I have to do this, I have to have it perfect. I didn't want to have that. I wanted to have something that you could just take and um, use loose rings, and you could put in whatever you wanted into your journal. You could take out whatever you wanted. Uh, for example, photographs, letters from your grandma, memorabilia. I wanted to be able to capture all of those things in my books. I wanted something that could show your stories and tell your stories. My first journal sold within 24 hours. I couldn't believe it. And then that same customer bought a couple more journals the next day. I emailed her. Um, I think there's been a mistake. You just placed a second order with me. Old Mr. Self-Doubt was loving this one. She wrote to me and she said, Katie, I am so impressed with these little Gedanka books. I lost my husband a year ago. And the thing that I'm struggling with is dreaming again, of seeing another tomorrow, of setting new goals. I'm going to give my therapist this book and your website because the beautiful words you've written in this book are helping me to see my beauty again, too. And my hope is that one day I will again be able to pursue dreams instead of fearing pain. When you feel like your story matters, you can carry yourself a little taller. Suddenly, you know that there are great things in, for, in store for your future, just as beautiful things have already happened in your life. You know you can keep stepping forward, keep smiling, 
and know that there are so many extraordinary moments in your seemingly ordinary life. Now, meanwhile, back in German class, my classmates and I had, oh, we had several hundred hours of lessons already under our belts. We knew that we weren't just learning German any longer. We were learning each other's stories. We were learning about each other's lives. Through listening to each other, we can transcend differences. When we share our successes and our weaknesses, the power of story is incredible. So today, if I can give you just one gift, it would be this. Know that you are not alone. Your life and your story is worthy of celebrating. When somebody comes up to you and says, boy, you know, whatever compliment, don't just say, thank you. Give that person a morsel of your life. Tell that girl that the handbag that you got is a gift you bought yourself to celebrate your graduation, or that unique spelling of your name is in honor of your grandfather who helped rebuild the North Dakota State Capitol when it burned down. Write your stories. Read the stories of your community and its people. And most important of all, listen. You'd be amazed by the beautiful untold stories that your neighbors are carrying deep inside of their hearts. That's the power of story. It takes those seemingly ordinary moments of our lives and it makes us realize how extraordinary they really are. So tell me your story. I will listen.